last week has caused me to pray these words often. Because no matter how horrible and dark and difficult things can feel, we can know that Christ is with us. This is the promise he gives us. Let us remember these words. Because the church cannot promise that the things that we are witnessing in the world at the moment will be fixed. We can remind ourselves of the promise that God gives us, and we can we promise that things will actually be okay, but we can't promise that they will be fixed. We can't say what will happen with the protests in America, how they will end. We can't say how, if they will end peacefully or whether they will continue. We can't say that racial inequality in the United States and in our own nation will be fixed. We can't say that the leader of the United States will resign because he will realise how incompetent he is. We can't say that he will be voted out in November because the population of the United States wakes up to the fact that they have been conned and this man is not a leader, but he is a selfish narcissist. The church can't say that things will be alright and that these things will be sorted. That isn't our job. We don't have that authority. But we can say the words of Christ and remember his promise to us. I am with you always to the end of the age. Because we can't say that everything will be alright. But we can speak of how it is wrong. We can speak the gospel into what is happening. Black lives matter. African American people are being murdered by the police. The people who are charged to look after the people are killing the African American people. Many of you would have seen the footage of George Floyd, George Floyd this week. A policeman, a man who was charged to look after the people, knelt on this man's neck for over eight minutes until he died from asphyxiation. His last words were, I can't breathe. This is why protests are happening. This is why people are angry in the United States, throughout the world. African Americans are subject to a dehumanized existence due to, sub, due to systematic, systematic racism. The gospel can speak right into the middle of that. The gospel that we know, that we proclaim from this church. Remember Christ's words for us to love our neighbor. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan. We can recite the Magnificat, lines from it which are, He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. For the church, for a follower of Christ, to support the Black Lives Matter movement should just be a given. There should be no question on this. Because if the church does not stand up for those who are oppressed, what are we doing? We can see this last week with Trump's photo op how the gospel can be used to support oppression. The president staged a photo for his own ego in front of a church that he does not attend holding a book that he does not know how to read. All for the sake of garnering support of people who profess 
to follow Jesus Christ, yet do not love their neighbour. It is an absolute disgrace. It is beyond disrespectful to the scriptures that we hold dear. It is an act, I would say, of blasphemy. It is an act of evil. For the church to be the church, to be followers of Christ, it needs to speak out against Trump, against Trumpism, against racism, and against violence. To stand with the oppressed and against the oppressor. To do otherwise is to follow someone or something else than Christ. We are to remember who it is we have been called to follow. Black lives matter. All lives matter. We know this. We hear it in Genesis, read so wonderfully by Father Ron. Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. We are created in the likeness of God. All of us. Every single human being in this world created in the likeness of God. So yes, all lives do matter. But at the moment, at this moment in time, where we are, black lives matter. Because black people are being killed by the police because they are black. So at the moment, I would say that black lives matter with some urgency. And it is our job to stand with our brothers and sisters in humanity and to stand alongside them, to listen to what we are being told, to stand up for those who are being oppressed and killed. All humanity is created in God's image. Now is the time for us as followers of Christ to make that known loud and clear that we are with those who are being killed, who are being beaten, and those who are being oppressed. And we will do whatever we can to stop this from happening. That is the call of the gospel. That is the call that we've all been baptised into, enclosed in the Trinity and love, called to follow the way of Christ. So we can say to our brothers and sisters who are oppressed, indeed, to all humankind, that Christ is with you to the end of the age. At this time, it is our job to be able to say that, to be that, and to mean that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.